Hello, this is Valk from Decapitated, and you are listening Interview Under Fire. All right. Hey there, everyone. I'm going to welcome you all back to a brand new edition of Interview Under Fire. This is your beloved host, Sonny, here. Today, I am joined by the amazing, prominent Riff Master in Vogue. It is, bro, it's quite the honor, man. Thank you so much for joining our IUF series today. You know, we are entering an exciting time of the year for you and the rest of the guys over at The Mighty Decapitated with the release of your newest headbanger of a record, Cancer Culture, getting set to drop May 27th through Nuclear Blast. Now, Vogue, I want to start things off by, you know, commending you on all the well-deserved recognition this has been getting so far, especially with those singles that dropped, you know, the title track, Hello Death, which features Tati of Ginger, the one that was announced today. uh, uh, What is it? Just a Cigarette? Right. Uh, Yeah, a new single today. So much to unravel about this highly anticipated release and what you are all about. Before we get to all that, right, I want to kind of just relax here for a bit. You know, I want to I want to get to this because this is is another exciting event that has has happened recently that you guys have just wrapped up the band's 25th anniversary tour alongside Signs of the Swarm and Harbinger throughout the U throughout the UK and Ireland. Right. Tell me more about this, man. How was it? You know, having something like touring return to our lives. It's such a great feeling. I mean, it was a simple thing pre pandemic, but it, now it's like it's a lot to be grateful about, right? Well, Sonny, you you already touched so many topics. I mean, I don't know how to start, actually. I'm just going to mute myself. That's all right. That's all right. So, yeah, but it's really cool that you mentioned that tour. But actually, it's it's good for the starting uh, interview because this 25 years uh, anniversary tour was such a great comeback because actually what it was, was a celebration of 25, 25 years on the stage of, right. for this band, which is amazing. It's unbelievable. And also, but it, it was still a, uh, a comeback tour because of obviously COVID times and, and, and all things like that. So it was it was first tour after two years for the band um, that we finally uh, play since beginning to the end with any problems uh, talking about COVID. And yeah. it was amazing. It was just mind blowing experience. Uh, we had we didn't expect like the venues was full we have about five shows sold out of this tour uh, this tour including like 15 15 shows and then five was sold out and every other venue was just completely packed and the response for the for the song for the band it was just amazing we prepare 16 songs for every day which is quite a lot, but it's still not enough to deliver everything what we need. It, it takes 75 to 80 minutes of the set. It was like the longest set we ever did in this wow. band. And we we even, cho- we even tried to choose. It wasn't easy to choose the set list for that because we knew there will be old fans. There'll be newer fans. There'll be fans that were uh, middle middle fans. You know, <laughs> So we choose a bunch of songs from uh, from the early albums, from Nihility, from Winds of Creation. We the most of the songs come actually we, we play five songs from nihility from the second album from 2002 which was the one probably of the most important uh in our career uh with the spheres of man a song with nihility names and babylon's pride all those classics and that was the first time we we back for the set list after the years with such a huge amount of uh big amount of the old songs and i i discovered the songs with the band again after after many years with it, we didn't play some of the songs since forever, since 15, 20 years, because for some reason, that's a long we, time. We <laughs> about, yeah, it's a long time. And and I could see the reaction of the when, when you're saying on the stage, when you're in the band, you can see the faces. It's amazing view, like reaction of the songs and then how the people uh, react and how they, um, you know, how they feel the music. And uh, there's the some of the people they they hear the songs for the first time uh, uh, since many years and the reaction of the face you could see that like this is like waiting for christmas uh <laughs> for for 20 years or something like that like the the most looking for like you waiting for it's, some it's almost of... like it's almost like hearing the song again for the first time exactly exactly 
and it was it was just amazing time great experience great it was also great to be back with the old songs great to be back again after two years of covid on the stage we have such a great time in the band right now and with also with the whole crew members and all the support bands really really great tour really really great amazing comeback like show in london we sold out this show in underworld which is very um old venue a very uh like a cult venue for the metal heads we played there our first show ever in london in this underworld venue in the club that have a huge history like almost every band like carcass nap on death it's like kind of venue that is uh rain uh, not rainbow it's uh what is the name of the famous uh hollywood venue there motley crew star and uh, oh, uh, um, the name but, but but in whiskey. New York, it's like a it's a like a whiskey. Oh, whiskey uh, go go. Whiskey go go. Yeah, I was I was gonna think about CBGB. Like that's you know also, in New oh, York. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So this is the other world. It's kind of this kind of venue for London, which is about six hundred capacity, and those people were insane. The London is always insane. But what was the name of that venue? The Underworld. The Underworld. Okay, I'm gonna have to Underworld. It's on the Condem. To... It's on the Condem uh, restrict. Condem is just this kind of famous uh, part of the London. It's like okay. a multi multicultural place with so many different uh, mix of the culture, like from all the world. It's amazing. They like so many stores, so many food, uh, uh, like restaurants with different different foods. It you can you can find like hundreds of different. Uh, representing of the different nationalities in 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 every kind of uh possible like like the restaurants the venues the people around it's amazing part of the town as well and so that tour was just like a huge amazing legendary comeback and legendary anniversary i i've been talking also it was obviously rasta is this uh, is a frontman but i was yeah. also have a microphone during the set, so I, I could speak to the people because I'm the original member from the band since the beginning. So I think like it actually makes sense that I will also say a few words for the fans and show them my appreciation for, for all those re- years they've been staying together with the band and they're still coming to the shows and they're supporting so, so, uh, so it's a huge, so, so, such a huge support from their side. Not even like in the bad times, in the great times, they always there and they support. I could really see in that we have yeah. this really loyal uh, fan base. Uh, so it was amazing spirits, really. And not even that. I I just want to add, like it really shows the relationship between you and the fans. And listen to what you just said to me, Bog. I mean, you described to me one show. You know, that's something like if we were talk if we were to have this discussion. Pre pandemic, I'm sure. I mean, everyone loves to do shows. I mean, I I want to have, I'm sorry, I, I want to have like almost the, every show on this tour was like that. I mean, London was probably the, you know, the highlight of the of the mm-hmm. tour, or, or one of the best, but the whole tour, like shows in Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester, everywhere. Even and that was amazing because on this tour, we we play for the very first time in the, some of the places that we never been in before. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it was like mm, we rebook, reschedule this uh, this tour. It, it's supposed to be first. It's supposed to be European tour, but because of the COVID restriction, we moved this tour only for UK, Ireland, and and to make this uh, this tour more full, like uh, longer. Uh, our agency, Avocado Booking from Europe, they yeah. uh, ad- they they've been adding more shows, like places like Swansea, like Milton Keynes, like places that we never knew that exist. Some smaller towns, smaller places, still amazing. So it was just great, great. I can't wait to go back on tour. Are you seeing the? I don't know if you had a chance to see the comments on YouTube or all your music videos. There are new, not even just uh, YouTube. I'm talking about Instagram, Facebook. There are thousands of people here in the States who are, I mean, I'm one of them, but they're dying to see you guys again. I mean, if you've been talking about the shows that, you're experiencing overseas. I mean, wait till you get here. <laughs> We're going to do another follow-up interview. Hopefully, you know, we can do one here in, like in person, like here at the venue, like actually like doing that, you know, I, cause I miss doing yeah. interviews in person, just something simple like that. But everything you're telling me, I feel like you, 
I feel like there is a newfound appreciation that you are having for the touring life, right? Would I mm-hmm. assume for that? sure? For sure. Uh, absolutely. I, I'm absolutely agree with you. I mean, the, the two years without the shows show not, um, I, I'm guessing not only for me and my band, I'm, I'm sure it shows for all the musicians, all the people yeah. they, they touring that it's such an important part of our life. This is something w- what we really love, something we are almost like ad- addictive for. I could see so much that people are, were so hungry, like for the, for the live show, you can listen uh, your favorite music on uh, on the CD, on the vinyl, on Spotify, wherever you can still have it these days uh, going on YouTube. But live music, live show experience is, in my opinion, the most important experience. Talking about, uh, you know, being when you love music, when you when you when you're looking for listening to music, live show is the most important part of that for all of us not for, for not for the bands I'm talking about uh, audience for the fans yeah uh, i could uh, say they are they're missing that so much uh, and uh, that's why the for us uh, playing the show was like an, another level of uh, enjoying and i could see the same i could say the same for the crowd they are enjoying so much and they the the they, they just uh, there were so much people wanted to see, and the, all the venues were full. So that was just amazing, uh, amazing anniversary tour. I wish to play longer to like that, not just UK. After the, we finished last show, we've been we've been talking with our our uh, with my friends from the band and from crew. Like this tour is just supposed to be started. It should be like beginning of tour, and we should have another fifteen or twenty five shows more. Somewhere mm-hmm. in Europe or US or wherever, so I'm 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 sure if we come back to US next year with the new album, we're gonna come back also for uh, old songs and 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 make this kind of celebration of 25 years, maybe a little after, but you know we don't wanna yeah. uh, forget about the US fans and and we we I'm sure we're gonna add for the list all these songs because they are they have new life right now with our new uh, experience we taken from all these years right now playing these old songs is completely different i mean completely it's it's a different they're sounding amazing and uh, and also we have the great great lineup right now we have james stewart on drums such so, a great drama man so i had a chance to interview james uh right before the pandemic hit when he was with Vader. really and wow. yeah yeah we talked for like a good half hour man you guys really knocked it out of the park, and I felt like James couldn't have been a more better fit as a drummer. I heard, I like, I knew it was James when I was listening to Cancer Culture, the entire really? album, first to, uh, you know, top to bottom, and I was like, man, okay, this is so you- the perfect fit. But sorry, do you want to add something to that? Because uh, I feel like James Stewart I- was a, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I just want to like ask a quick question. Like, do you feel that his style is there, and he? Yes, um, and I felt that right off the bat with uh, the title track. And then going to just a cigarette and his blast beats. He has a way of like doing the blast beats where it's, he stands out from all the other death metal drummers in the crowd, you know, and with, and he's been through a bunch of other bands too, you know, and let's not forget that. So he has that experience and I hope he stays with you guys. Cause he's, I mean, if you're James is going to listen to this, James much love to you, man. I think you found uh, your fit where you belong and uh, what decapitated. Oh, that's amazing. That's great and, to hear. I also want to add fog because you talked about, here's the thing, man, we love death metal because we love metal because it's a it's about the live experience. It's about the live atmosphere, right? I of mean, course. I'm not I'm not knocking the other genres like pop and country. That's totally fine. But but with metal, there's a difference. You feed the energy off the crowd. And during the pandemic, what did we see? Live streaming. A lot of the bands they would do live streaming, right? They would mm-hmm. be like in an empty room, obviously because of the pandemic they couldn't be there. But yeah. you know, it was like you kind of sort of hit that creative barrier. It was cool to mosh in your own room. Right, which I did that, but it's like now what? <laughs> so wow. I, don't, I don't know if that's something that has crossed your mind. If you if, did that, is that something decapitated did do a live streaming? You know, while everything was shut down, because it you know there's a challenge to that. You know, uh, well, we've been thinking about that, but we finally didn't decide to do it. I yeah. mean, still okay, we've been busy with with making a new album, so we've been focusing 
uh, mostly of the on the creating new songs and and prac after the we finished the uh, uh, writing process. We've been busy for three months, mm-hmm. almost like every day without the weekends. Me and James practicing this album because we wanted to be really really well prepared for this session, and so we take a time. We we we've been thinking about uh, live streams, but to be honest, like I've been watching some of the streams and that was actually a pretty cool idea to do that. So you don't leave your fans with nothing and you, people, yeah. uh, you know, bands trying to just fix the situation, like, like how, how it's like possible for bands, like stop to play for the bands they've been doing this since many years. And then suddenly they are, you know, canceling all the shows and that was tough. So for people, they love to do it they they needed to play live they some of the bands like so you say silence like like behemoth they i see the band and not even mention the machine had they robbie and jared been yeah. doing this every almost probably like every week with a happy hour so those guys love to play live they just don't imagine to to stop it and see it uh, on the ass and then then they just don't do it so yeah. that's really i'm full of respect for those guys but because it's actually a really brave decision to do that because you know like you don't have an audience you you don't have this kind of feeling uh this kind of energy you are in the empty room basically uh and uh, and you play in the front of cameras and you know there maybe there are some people on the other side and of the camera uh, but that's it the camera, it's like, then, you know it's then, like you have to like okay this is weird like what do i do do i headbang do i <laughs> Yeah, it's different because it's also there's different different sound. This is not live sound. It's more like a studio sound. Mm-hmm. So you need you really need to deliver like great performance. So it probably makes another little, little bit more stressful situation. Wherever, but we, we didn't decide to do it because first of all we've been really busy with the new album. We we're trying to focus on uh, on the album. Plus we said to ourselves like you know what maybe we we will not be one of this band they doing the streams live streams we we're gonna wait for the for the better times we're gonna wait for real tours and we choose just live playing live it's supposed to be uh with the crowd with the life for for us like life is life like life performance should be life yeah with the crowd with the people so we we just decide to okay be patient wait and for sure there will be one day that every everything comes in the right way so it's it's actually right now and yep. we have we have new album in premiere in a few weeks maybe days it's soon it's going it's going uh to be very very soon 27 of may um and yeah and then we have the summer festival season then we have tour with the spice icon here in europe uh, I need to plus... get out to Europe. I'm just gonna have to get out there to see you guys. At this point, <laughs> I don't think I can wait. <laughs> That's a tour with Despised Icon. I Icon mean... and Bridal Sacrifice. So also, also the, the those guys are on the bill. So it's gonna. Oh be... man, yeah. We so we had Kyle from Brand of Sacrifice on our show. One of the nicest guys ever. And if you, anyone who hasn't checked out Brand of Sacrifice, stop what you're doing right now and check them out immediately because they're doing some amazing things. Now, if anyone who doesn't know, I'm gonna get to your eighth album. Vog is also the guitars for a for an, a prominent metal band, Machine Head. If anyone doesn't know, and here's the thing, Vog, you're actually a part of two bands who are responsible for two of my favorite albums ever, which is the Blackening from Machine Head and Organic Hallucinosis from Decapitated. Two of my wow. favorite death, two of my favorite technically metal albums ever. You were part of that, so wow. anyway, no big, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 a crazy thing to think about. I mentioned 25 years, right? I want to turn the clock back here for just a moment before we get to cancer culture, because back in 99, 1996, Fog, you know, I don't know if you were a sentimental person like me, but as of late, you talked about the last two years, you know, trying to, you know, working on the music that you have. Have you ever just stopped for a moment to take a look back on that time in your life during the band's like early days and where this all began when you were just a teenager? I mean, you've certainly come a long way, obviously. Um, shout out and love to your, you know, uh, late brother, uh, Vitek, you know, one of the greatest death metal drummers of all time. But, bro, you went through the trials, you went through tribulations, the losses, the achievements, the struggles and the victories. Just have you had a moment to reflect on that? You know, we've been home for the last two years. So I feel like that's an important question to ask. 
yeah but uh, when i reflect for for the, all these uh uh darker moments i always take the uh the strength from those that another motivation yeah. i don't take this as uh you know make myself put myself into depression or something like that so i just take all of uh you know like take, thinking about vtech when i think about vtech for example i i don't think about the accident i think about our great days we spent together and yeah. uh, i think about how great drummer he was and i i sometimes that's my actually favorite like thinking about him sharing about all those stories when we were young and thinking about if he will be still alive between us if he was still there um how great drummer he will be right now i just trying sometimes i think like, about that, that a lot and, and, and i'm actually scared about like he will be just outstanding icon of of metal drumming these days but i i think about all these uh dramatic things uh, for like this way uh with me also like uh so so i always think about the positive things and and every experience in life we all have i think as a motivation as uh giving me another strange and experience so yeah and here's i have two brothers Vogue, and they're both drummers so and i come from a family of musicians so i wow. I, rel I related to that two, dr two brothers two drummers yeah yeah they're both drummers yes. yeah oh my god and, lots and, of noise in, they need oh trust me it's a lot of, lots of noise lots of noise and, and they've been playing since they were babies and they're both in their 20s and 30s so um you know and you know vitek is actually one of their inspirations so um they actually have no idea i'm interviewing you right now so this is going to be a good surprise for them when they actually hear it but awesome. But having said that, you know, much love to your brother Vitek. Yeah, I think about that a lot. But it's really nice to see the legacy he's left behind. You know, a lot of drummers, modern, a lot of modern and contemporary death metal drummers today cite your brother as an influence. I feel like that's a sense of you know. I feel like you feel there's a level of fulfillment for you. Like you feel proud. There's there's that level of man. That is my brother, and I'm gonna do my best to live up to that. You know, something like yeah, that. I, that's that's. I feel I like that all the time with my own. Say like like. All the time we posting a picture of Vitek or like we do an uh, announcement about mm -hmm. his life or uh, his anniversary of like passing away. Like there's so many like hundreds of actually comments that uh, there are so such nice comments from from the people and uh, because Vitek was so down to earth guy, he he had he has always has so many friends around and he makes just people laugh and makes people happy. Mm -hmm. uh also inspired and all these people right now they come back with the comments or some messages me that sharing the some of the stories i never hear and some of the stories are just not really amazing like um i i should give some example right now i i remember i that was the one story i don't know i will remember right now like Take your time. oh yeah yeah i know i know that some some guy i remember this comment because it's it was so amazing that he said that he remember we've been playing with uh, Fear Factory in states. There was a one tour, Fear Factory, Suffocation, Decap, and Hypocrisy. What a lineup, by the way. Um, and then uh, Vitek, uh, he's doing a drum tech for Hork from Drummer of Hypocrisy. Yeah. So he, he did this uh, drum tech work. And the guy who, who made a comment said that he just entered the venue uh, and he's seen uh he's seen um some dude on the stage working on the drums for hypocrisy and then like he sit down and start to play some like a uh, soundtrack drum section so, and he blows his fucking mind and then he and then he he find out it's vtech from decapitated and it was like for him was was such a surprising that like a drum tech could play like that and you know he he been um in the, such a moment for the venue for for seeing the moment like that and and he didn't realize he did realize after that there was uh, vtech and 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 that was just like one of the of the some story that people share about about, about him and of course the most of stories that he was such a great great guy he's always there between the fans and between people talking and and laughing with everything I can see I can see his picture right now. I have yeah. his pictures here in my 
you can see it's the other side of the my little studio here in in, in Krakow. So yeah, only good memories with this guy. And shout out, shout out to the tech man. Yeah, it's just, I mean, no one, no one did it the way he was doing it, especially at that time of death metal. And that's a thank for thank you for sharing that story, by the way, Bog. I, I had I had Peter from Hypocrisy on my show. I should have asked him that question. Oh man! I, oh, you know that's another story. I should I, I have to say for the you know talking about uh, Vitek and and Peter Todgren that. Uh, we spent a lot of time with hypocrisy with with Peter Todgren. We play about two tours, two long tours in the US with them. We've been sharing a, a, a same car actually for tour because hypocrisy booked the nightliner before the tour and then they come to States and there was no nightliner. Like there was some kind of, you know, this kind yeah. of situation that someone disappear or never show up. They just, whatever. But they didn't have a, uh, a vehicle for the tour so we share our rv with hypocrisy for the whole Dude. tour <laughs> yeah, it was like crazy but it, it was amazing as well we did me and vitek we did uh, uh the guitar and drum tech for them to make a little bit extra cash for, for the tour because those the times we didn't we go for tour and we didn't know we we come back with money or not you know and that was uh just like taking care about the promotion and 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 just the most important thing was just go for the tour and play shows, right? Which it still is, but it was just a little bit harder back in the days. So we did this job for them. And I remember after the tour uh, that for some reason, we come back without any money back home after like six weeks of touring or wherever. And I remember like one week after the tour, uh, Vitek got a delivery from Sweden and there was a whole drum kit from Peter Todgren. He buy him drum kit, and it was Christmas. He buy him drum kit. Peter Todgren just buy and send to Vitek with saying any, without saying anything, just like a surprise. Uh, oh my gosh! You know, that's that's Peter. That's Peter. Man, so, Peter! Shout out to Peter. We've been we've been doing a lot of shout outs on this interview. So shout out to Peter. Yeah, we, Peter was on our show uh, when uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Worship came out. Uh, that the latest album. And they're actually going to be here in Dallas. I'm actually covering them next week. So hopefully, if, if I see him, I'll tell him you said hello. Um, oh, but, yeah, man, for sure. Peter, uh, yeah, uh, shout out to him. It, it looks, and I love those stories. Like, just simple stories like that really tend to stand out. It really shows the relationship between decapitated and, and hypocrisy. Like, like, Peter, I mean, he's been there since the beginning. And, you know, it's it's really cool to see that relationship grow. Hopefully, I can see you guys and Peter. I mean, I'm just a fan. But next year... If you guys can come back with hypocrisy, do like a tour together. Um, holy shit! Yeah, we 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 always talk about like finally go on tour together, but mm -hmm. you know it's just sometimes hard to uh, connect all those uh, days and 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 things like that. So yeah, but that will be one day we 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 for sure we have to do a reunion tour with them because you know Peter and all guys from Hypocr hypocrisy they're just amazing. They're treating us so well and yeah. we're just nice. And and Peter's one of these legendary, really legendary uh, uh, musician that yeah. is always there. He's always cool and just like super nice guy, no problem guy and amazing, amazing with great sense of humor and, and also like a genius, musical genius that makes so much great music. So And he's been, he's been doing it for a long time too. So much love to Peter. Oh, yeah. Obviously much love to the late, great Vitek. Um, now I want to switch gears here. Vogue. We talked about everything. Let's get to let's get to cancer culture, man, because this dropped right. May twenty seventh on Nuclear Blast Records. This is the eighth album. Now, eighth album. Before we get into the core of cancer culture, this is the follow up to 2017's Anti Cult, which was just another amazing effort through and through. That was actually one of my favorite records that of that year, because um, awesome. I, I remember I saw you guys later that summer. That record actually helped me get through a lot um in my life at that time anti cult because really I, yeah because i was looking i remember I never was like the first single really released for that album and then i believe it, it was it was kill it was it was kill the cult i i believe and then it just i mean i, I couldn't stop listening to that album and uh, i mentioned that why it was my favorite records of that year but you know knowing the success of albums like anti cult you know carnival is forever organic hallucinosis even and goes into my point of 25 years. Vogue, was there any such thing as pressure for you when you decided to sit down and write again for this album, considering 
we are well into the band's career at this point. Well, uh, I, I, I have to say that um, I'm lucky to don't have too much pressure mm-hmm. talking about the, when I create the albums. Uh, and, and it's since, I mean, I have a little pressure for the first album because um, I didn't have, I just, it, it was like another story, I have to say, um, that after we record two first, first two uh, demo tapes, yeah, uh, we immediately, almost immediately signed a uh, deal, like a, a management deal with the, one of the manager here in Poland who was a manager of Polish legendary death metal by Vader. So these days for us, when we've been like six, 17, 18, uh, it was kind of stressful because he said like, okay, guys, I want you to be in part of my management and I will find record deal for you, but you need to record uh, maybe two, you need to make another two or three songs and come to the studio uh, and record a full length album. And I was, I didn't have much time for doing that, like a few months maybe, but, and I was like kind of still kind of stressed that, okay, right now, what to do, what to do. If you, if you make your music, that's, that's really, I think it's really important to say that if you make your music just like without any record deal, without any managers, without any expectation, just because you love to mm-hmm. play guitar, because you love this kind of music and you have this, uh, inside feeling to create something then you will have no stress you just do something you, you have love, a, you, you have right? a passion for what you do right so this is just a pleasure you can focus on music you can focus on solo party on about harmony about your sound about your technique hmm. and don't thinking about uh, that this is some kind of expectation this is something like that and i i i have a little stress about that before the first album and then after that i i, I didn't have stress at all after creating an of album i think everybody everyone around have bigger stress than me you know and i just i just trying to focusing on the music i create on the riffs i i i know i'm good with that all right i'm not i'm i'm, I'm pretty maybe <laughs> well, it, i already it, know it, you're good with that <laughs> I, maybe it's sounding a little bit like like the the i have like an ego or something like that for me i mean it's not easy for me i spent so much time to create every single note yeah. i spent so much hours so many hours to create single riff to make it perfect to make myself conscious that this is something i want to share with the other people and that, but anyways, first of all, for me, I don't have and I, I don't feel this kind of stress. I have pleasure to making the music, which even is sometimes painful and it takes whole it's like so much time from me, from my family. And it's a big part of my life like spending so much time to create. But um I'm not afraid about that expectation. It actually those expectations, I knew that people were waiting for that and and, and it needs to be kind of the good album, right? And But it's just like a motivation. It's just pumping me up. Yeah. Like it's pushing me to work more and just focusing more and listen again and again and again and to make sure that I have something that I really want to share and it's something which makes people happy, make okay. our fans happy. And this is this is my only when I focus. I don't try. I I'm not trying to focus in for, for things that can, you know, makes me, uh, feels bad about what I'm doing. I trying to focusing on the important things about the riffs, about the music, about the drum feels, about the deliver. The best metal music i can deliver and and that's it i don't feel stressed about that because also i know that we have the the fan base that are always loyal always supporting us no matter no matter happen and well what i trying to say right now let's i need to think first i need to think what i trying to say um i just i'm just lucky that i i'm just like don't have this part of the brain that makes me thinking uh, like to be stressed about yeah. creating because I have some expectation, things like that. No, 
and and, and that's a good thing. It that's an answer. Really and, good and, thing. And, and I love that answer because it shows that you have a dedication to your craft, Fog. You know, over the years, and and now you we find about you you current you're always improving on every record. And I, I need I, I need to that. say I I need to say like everything what happened around the band that we became uh, like worldwide recognizable mm -hmm. respected band everything would happen that people know our songs everywhere like talking about australia new zealand singapore china japan states like people there are people they they know this band they are metal has they they recognize the name and they know a little about that still and this is just like a, a result of something that i'm doing here at my home that I just focusing on the important things. I don't focusing about, I don't create music that will make people happy. I don't follow for the, like, uh, what is right now, what is a popular, what is, uh, you know, what other bands playing. I focusing on my emotions or about my feelings. I trying to go inside of myself that what I have in my heart, what I have my brain in, in this moment when I create. And that just want to be really, truly honest with what I'm doing with the music. And this is it. This is what I'm doing. And that's like telling true. If you know, like you are honest and telling true, it's it's it shouldn't be stressful. And this is what I'm trying to mm -hmm. when I I try to speak by my music, by my riffs. Yeah, like hundred percent honest. That's why I think that's why I don't feel the stress because I don't want to follow for. For the styles they are right now they are uh you know like popular or something yeah it, you have your own style now i want you to hear me out okay you can relax with this part because I, I feel like right. my brain's about to explode if i don't say this because from the title track to hello death to suicidal space program which is my personal favorite on that song all the way to right. last supper i mean vogue this is quite the offering because you guys continue to develop and add to the sound of technical death metal groove metal but with a modernized melodic twist this time around and hint to tatiana with hello death like i know it's decapitated you know this record i felt like it exemplified a newer and refreshing side to you guys that i never saw coming and that's a good thing because it shows the band that is a band that is growing throughout that time that's a good formula between your insanely creative riffs between rasta's vicious vocal capabilities and james's master for like rhythmic drumming i mean five year wait right from 2017 to now it was worth right. every second i'm gonna quote you here okay vog thank you, said you sometimes you said sometimes you need to leave your comfort zone and take a risk to achieve something totally epic check oh yeah i feel like you actually check that off the mental checklist that you have in your head walk me through this how much did things change from when you first started composing on cancer culture to where you ended up finishing it did a lot change in between did nothing change did you already have a specific sound in mind from day one loaded question no, I, know, but no, I feel like I, no i mean um I, I i hope i understand it well but um the composing process i mean you can you can uh, think just be, before you start uh, you, you can feel if if you go this or this direction or yeah. wherever like how it's supposed to sound i i don't spend too much time to thinking this way be, before i start to write I just, I just like start to write. I just play guitar. It just comes. This is how it just comes, and it just comes with another, another riff. When you start to adding, when you have the idea for the song, you know this is oh, this riff is a good idea for the song, for the next song, and then you adding another riff and another, and and it's yeah, it's really exciting process. I have to say, when this is like all the time, like Eureka, Eureka, I have a new riff. You, sometimes I spend like hours here in my room to just walk from one point to the other point, just walking there, walking there and, and listen, uh, listen, the riff I have already, the idea for the song. And I, I put this riff, I put in this riff in the loop. So it goes again and again and again. And then listening to this riff, I try to imagine what will be next, what kind of riff I got. And when finally find that, it's just like, yes. Yes, I have it, and I have next three. I'm sure it's gonna be an amazing song. Um, so I, I go, I follow with the ideas. I follow with my every next day. I follow with some feelings, some 
emotions. I don't have. I don't know how to actually describe it because it's it's art. It's and, not and that's okay because you know it's yeah. it's not easy to describe this all this process and name of this process. It's going here uh, during the writing. Um, it's but for sure. Um, I didn't plan like to do songs like "Hello Death," for example. I, I didn't plan that. I try trying to experiment. I for this album, I trying to do the, like the different flavors, which still sounding like decapitated. But it, every every song is like different flavor in the decapitated souls, basically. You know. Yeah, and uh, and, and also I the, my my one of my um, goal before the creating this album that songs need to be different, like that. I don't want to make this kind of album that every song is quite similar to each other. I, I want to surprise, not even with the whole album, another album. I want to surprise with another song which come to the uh, your player, which, which when you listen the uh, entire album, which I think we actually did it. And, and it's really fresh album and lots of epic moments, lots of melody. The melody, it's another thing to tell here, uh, tell about in <laughs> here because we didn't have such an amount of melodies since yeah. his probably first album. We, we've we been looking for like chunky riffs on the anti-code, more like groovy, chunky riffs, seeing, uh, like putting more attention for right hand instead of left hand. And right now I was like, damn, it's, it's me- melody is like just main thing in the music. You, it's, you, you can express yourself be, because of but you play you can make some even simple melody which you know we we show your feelings like perfectly so i I feel like i feel like we it's like the melodies in decapitated catalog it describes your personality like it's you everything you are is within those riffs you know and and i'm thinking of a song the song that comes to mind when you're talking about the melodies is iconic class because as i was listening to that song i was like is that Rob? That has to be Rob because as he was singing, if anyone doesn't yeah. know, Rob Flynn is a, a, a guest. That's another. That, I'm sorry. That, that's <laughs> another thing in uh, in on this album that for the first time we uh, we've been asking uh, uh, Tatiana and Rob, some you know the, the singers from the other bands to sing yeah. actually not scream, and they singing and that is another thing that uh, it's an new uh in decapitated we have a few parts that rasta was singing with the dirty dirty melodies but right now we have pure clean vocals from rob and from tatiana and i figure i figured out uh, because of this album that i can create riffs that people can sing for and it's amazing you know oh man see that's what i say oh. that adds that adds another i mentioned it was a new refreshing side to newer and refreshing side of decapitated Bam! That's exactly what we're, what I was talking about. When 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 someone will listen to this album and 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 there's the really uh, intense beginning, like we have three killer death metal songs on the beginning, and then you have Hello Death, which also starting with the aggressive riffs, but then when Tatiana is coming to the room, it's completely like uh, unexpected things that it's it's the the riffs taking, you the riffs you wrote while she's doing her vocals like i right. can't, i can't get over that i don't know how you come up with these riffs i don't care just keep doing it because i feel like that's just another form of art i was gonna ask like how do you know if you've achieved that riff do you ever fall into that trap where the song is done right and then you go back it's like oh shoot i should have done it this way as opposed to what it's on the you see what i'm saying like and then when you when you actually perform it live, you know what? I'm gonna switch it up here a little bit. I don't know. If oh that's... yeah, I think every <laughs> guitar player, every artist have this. That after one year, after few years, after even a few weeks or months after you uh, you record something, then you would <laughs> wanted to change something and and probably of course. I don't know if it's good, but you know this is just recording in the some aspect uh, specific time frame or whatever. Yeah. I don't know how to explain, but that was the times. We record as riffs, and that's it. It stays like like I felt in that moment, and for sure, we we change everything. We change uh, color of our walls. Uh, if one year ago, you feel you feel that white will be good. The next mm-hmm. year, you feel that red will be good, maybe. Or eggshell like white. We, Apparently, yeah, about... eggshell white is the same as white. <laughs> right. <laughs> so human beings are like unstoppable, like 
changing machines you know they we want to changing we changing as a uh, as a people as a you know you, we getting old we changing but we change for hopefully we are better and better and more experienced people and more good for each other and we change it for better so i think we uh, the human beings have some kind of um, inside like a power that uh, for, force us like um, squeeze us uh, chase us to to make everything better you know mm-hmm. i i think so and this goes together with the music yeah and uh, uh Vard, mm-hmm. uh, I know we're running out of time here. I'm gonna make sure you get to your next interview, but you are responsible for writing one of my favorite riffs of all time, and that is post organic. Holy oh shit. um that thank you album, so much. So uh, when I saw you guys in 2012, I was there's no way you remember the show. No way, and that's okay. I was the kid that was going insane in the front row when you guys played that song live wow. because that song changed my life. Uh post organic, just that song in particular. That you're responsible for that. So just so you know. No pressure. Thanks so much. But, <laughs> but... We've been creating setlists for summer festivals, and I was thinking, like, because we still don't have including post organic, because there's no, like, if you if you wanna play one hour show or like fifty five minutes for the festival, and you have like eleven songs, and uh, it's so hard, it's so so hard mm-hmm. to choose the, the the right songs, the old songs. You, you I would not. Now you have eight like, albums. Like... You have eight albums now, so you gotta you gotta pick I mean, and choose wisely. <laughs> I, I can't imagine playing like for three hours like Rob Flynn with Machine Head. And but it's oh yeah. The other, by the way, I, 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 by the way, so I have the I have it right here. This is from January twentieth of twenty twenty. I was at that show oh, in Dallas. Yeah. I covered you guys, and you guys played wow. two different sets. I was the one taking photos of you at the front. I don't know if you remember me at all, but but you guys played two different sets. If anyone who doesn't yeah. know, because I was Machine Heads. What is it? Their uh, twenty. That, that was their twenty fifth anniversary tour. How crazy! The uh, 25th I, I, of Where My Eyes, yes. Yeah, um, and you guys played one set where it was just, you know, Machine Head songs from, from the history, and then Burn My Eyes, the entire album. Man, the crowd went absolutely batshit crazy, and I love how you guys had two different lineups, too, because Logan Mater came back mm-hmm. out also. That was... Yep. Oh, man, that show. Sorry, I'm like, I'm just like fanboying here for a moment, but you guys... Of course. But I, I was, I'm also I was, like talking it's funny. about this. I, I, t- I told you the last time I saw you was 10 years ago, but I'm lying now. I'm thinking about it. It was, it was two years ago here in Dallas at House of Blues. But um, <laughs> but anyway, but I wanted to add that to that. But man, before we finish things off here, I know we've covered a good amount of ground on this awesome interview, bro. But but thank you so much for sharing so much about who you are about and what Decapitate is all about. I know you've fulfilled a fan's perspective here. I, don't, I, I know I speak for all fans saying that we are lucky to still have music from you guys with the crazy history that you guys have had. We could have not had you at all. You know, it's a, I'm very grateful. And you have been through hell and back fog for as long as I followed your work, there is definitely a strong sense of inspiration in all this. And I'm for grateful for what you have done. You know, the touring life, the 25th anniversary we talked about eight albums, you know, you're aging like fine wine personally and musically. I got to ask before we finish things off, have your aspirations as a musician a guitarist or hell as a human being have they changed or evolved since when you first started performing in the industry like do you see things differently today oh like i mean talking about vogue right now when i i'm 40 and talking about vogue when vogue was 15 when we start it's (laughs) yeah it's completely two two different two different guys uh for sure, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm not the crazy that I was before, I, but I have still I'm the same guy talking about like how much passion I have for playing guitar, and that's this is something incredible and and makes me happy and and should makes everybody happy. Like I'm an example like about like if you have a passion, it will stay with you for 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 your whole life, because I always think like I I've been always worried actually that if I will. We were getting older and older. Maybe I lost my passion for guitar, for for this metal, um, for playing shows and stuff like that. Which is not. I'm still so much hungry of doing that. You know, I can't wait to go for the rehearsal room to jam, jam with uh, jamming with James with Rasta. It still gives me the same same uh, amazing pleasure and and I'm really I'm I'm really grateful. Uh, I'm really really grateful and I'm just wanna right now make only good decisions in my life. I want to take care of my family. I want to, you know, be thankful for my fans. And I just want to play guitar 
go on tour, have a great time and deliver the best sound. Uh, because I think that's probably the best thing I'm doing in my life. And maybe I was creating for doing that to create the best sick guitar sound, which is possible to make on planet Earth. So thank you very and much. For no, that. no. Thank you for from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done. Vog. I can't wait till we do this again in person. I, I want to be able to do this when you guys are in Dallas. We'll talk about everything you've done. By the way, here's here's the picture of, of me and James when I interviewed him uh, uh -huh. in, in 2020 right awesome. before the pandemic. Yeah. So, so tell James that Sonny from interview on a fire said, hi, he's going to talk right. about how he was nervous during the interview. I'm not even kidding. I'm like, James, you don't have to be nervous. This is going to be a fun conversation. But it was, he it was, was great. Inter okay. So it was interview for Vader or yeah, like, it, that, um... they were with, they were with uh, hideous divinity back in 2020. It was when it was with Vader and I thought okay. I was going to get uh, the entire band, but James showed up, but James was awesome. I loved doing that interview with yeah, him. Yeah, he's great. He's <laughs> he, great guy. I had a, I had like, he's like, can I see the questions? I'm like, I may not ask you all these questions. He was looking at it. He was nervous looking at the questions. Like, I don't know if I'm going to answer. Uh, okay. I'm like, don't even worry, bro. Like everything's yeah, fine. Yeah, he's kind of, yeah, he's kind of, he's, uh, he's kind of okay, quiet so, actually. Yeah, he's, he's very experienced as being a drummer. But probably not as much as doing interviews because it, it was always <laughs> Pete. It so was always Peter. Yeah. Yeah. So, so next time I want to I want to do it with you and and James sitting next to each sure, other. Sure. Of so, course. So uh, Vog, let's stay in touch on the socials, man. I will let you know when this interview goes live. I can't wait for the fans to hear it. I can't wait for the fans to hear Cancer Culture. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let too. you go to your next interview. But man, uh, everyone who's listening, this is the mighty Vog from Decapitated. Cancer Culture drops May 27th on Nuclear Best Records. If you could do me and Vog a favor, everyone, buy the album because the bands can't do it without your help. It goes a long way. I still buy records. I'm very old-fashioned, Vog. I still buy the actual physical records that's sitting in the corner of my room. Of um, course. But and, and you need to know, you need to know, <laughs> if you listen to music from Spotify, that's okay. It's, that's okay, I'm, too. I'm yeah. gonna be, but if you're uh, talking just about quality of the sound, you, you need to know that listen from CD or, or vinyl, vinyl. It's yeah all, it's completely different thing all right <laughs> yeah it's like you're i remember when i had um uh you guys had uh anti-cult right so i listened to anti-cult front to back when the cd came out once the vinyl came out like i think i got it like a year after i don't know why i waited so long it, you know what but I, I actually i come back for the cd actually i discovered again like cd sound is pretty amazing actually it's, it's, it's pretty, really good and, and my it's different yeah it's like it got different taste different quality but it's really good it's, it's like high and sound anyways because the cds goes down because of the spot of the uh you know all this uh spotify apple music and stuff uh -huh. whatever but uh then vinyl come to the game when the huge in the big style but the cd is gonna come back because it's still <laughs> sounding great i don't know and then, and then bands are releasing cassettes these days too so i don't know if you guys Dude, are right that. yeah so it's crazy yeah we're like, doing also that. there will be also cassette releasing for <laughs> concert culture i gotta yeah. buy a tape recorder now it, you know it's like the uh -huh. vinyl it's like walk hey. walkman right <laughs> yeah the walkman. i still have my walkman uh anyway i'm gonna <laughs> let you go here we i feel like we could talk for another hour we'll save that for next time uh vog let's stay in touch um have a great release leading up to uh, thank you the end of this year um i look forward to seeing you guys here in the states you stay safe out there, man. And I will see you next time, buddy. All right. Much love. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sonny. All right. I talk to you soon. All right. Yeah. Stay in touch. Take all right. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you go here. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.